Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book review of William Kent Kruger's This Tender Land. This is the first time I've read a William Kent Kruger book, and I loved this book. I'm going to upfront tell you that this was my first five-star book of 2022. Such an excellent read. I highly recommend it. This is shelved in the thriller section of my bookstore, but this is not a thriller. Um, I think William Kent Kruger is known for writing like detective novels or something like that set in the Midwest. This also takes place in the Midwest, but this story follows four young children. Um, I'd say the youngest child is probably like in her single digits, and the main character, Odie O'Banion, is a 12-year-old boy. <clears throat> he is in the story with a young girl, with that young girl, whose name is Emmy, and also his older brother, Albert, who is like 16, and also another character named Mose, who is a Native American young man who is missing his tongue. So it's a very interesting group of characters together. Odio Banyan is such an awesome narrator. He's very, very funny. Uh, he's very smart. He's very uh, naughty. <laughs> And he is at this Indian training school with his older brother because they were sent there when their parents passed away. So they are considered orphans. Now this school is a terrible place. Mostly it's made up of Native American children who were either placed there or put there um, by other white people um, in order to uh, sort of get the Native American out of them and make them more uh, white, I guess, or white leaning. So it's that sort of a story in that way. But it's a beautiful story. It's about, I would say, running away, longing for something, searching for something. So they're at this school, which is in Missouri in the 1930s. And it's not a great place to be. They are treated very badly, at least most of them are, specifically Odie O'Banion, who gets into a lot of trouble and is constantly sent into the quiet room where he is often beat beforehand and then thrown in there to stay. Um, and it's filthy. It's got a rat that lives in it. He's not the only boy that goes there, but he's sent there very often. And eventually, some things happen in the story that cause him to do something unthinkable. And he, when he does so, these four people uh, in the story, these four kids, decide they need to run away and get away from this situation because they fear that they will probably be uh, severely punished, if not put to death, as a result of Odie's actions. And since they're all really close and they... Um, feel really protective toward one another, they all take off together. And on their way um, to St. Louis, which is where they hope to end up, they meet a whole cast of characters that either helps them or hinders them in some way. And it's very adventurous. It's very fun. It's also a little bit scary at times. These people that they meet either bring them together or pull them apart in various ways. And so it's interesting to watch the dynamics between these four people and the people that they come across. Odie's ultimate goal is to get back to his aunt in St. Louis, who um, he has only met once in his life as far as he knows. And Albert, his older brother, uh, is determined to help him get there so that they can start a new life, hoping that um, they can outrun these people who were chasing them this whole time. And they're making their way down the river in a canoe, the four of them. But once they get there, some secrets come to light that Odie learns where his home truly is and who his home truly is with. And it's a very, very interesting, it's a very moving story. It actually made me tear up several times, which is why I gave it five stars. It made me feel a lot. It, was, <clears throat> it had a real emotional impact on me, and I loved it. I loved all the characters. The prose is excellent. Odie O'Banion is a really adventurous narrator. He has many faults. And um, it was fun to watch him um, navigate these circumstances because he really does have a heart of gold, no matter how naughty he is. I thought that the protective natures of the characters toward each other were very endearing, and um, they're all really fully developed and really easy to like. The plot and the pacing of the story are really interesting and really well done. It doesn't drag in any way. The um, atmosphere is really alive. The scenes are really alive. You can really imagine what it's like to be in this part of the world in the 1930s. It's during the Depression era in the United States, and people are down on their luck, and it's really, really populated with an interesting and um, uh, endearing mix of characters. 
I would say that the sadness in the, this book is really palpable. You can really feel the sort of depressive nature of this time in American history. And you can see what it takes for people to get along and what it takes for these four kids to get along on their own. I can't wait to read more by William Kent Kruger, and I have two more of his books on my TBR for this year, Ordinary Grace and Desolation Mountain, so I'm really looking forward to reading more from him. This was such a great book. I can't say it enough. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Easy five stars for me. Um, so emotional, really interesting, fast paced. It's like a page turner, really. There wasn't a point where I wanted to put it down at all, and I could find no fault with it. So uh, highly recommend. Beautiful story, gorgeous cover. Uh, just an excellent all-around book from a probably going to be a new favorite author of mine, I can tell. So that's my review today of This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. Have you read this book? I know some of you have. Let me know your experiences with it in the comment section down below, but if I've sparked your interest in reading it, I'd love to hear from you. Um, let me know if you're interested. So that's all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel. It would truly help me out. Share the video with your friends if you feel like it, and I'll see you next time on my next video, which is coming on Saturday. I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye.